Alright, greetings and salutations. My name is Comic Fire, and welcome back to more Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga. In the last episode, we made it to the Samsara Tunnels, and in this episode, we're going to go through the Samsara Tunnels. Anyway, let's go check out our skills. Now, this is also done entirely in post commentary, so. <laughs> for skills, we got Bufu Dine for Surf, as well as Ice Amp. For Gale, we're working on Zandine, but he got Maz Mazionga. And whatever else comes with Mazionga, I kind of forgot. Electrine, yes. And for Argilla, we got a bunch of absorbing type stuff. Mostly I just gave her a bunch of junk mantras, so uh, I could save up Maka for real mantras, like Teradyne. Which I think is the one I'm going to go for next, because Medea Rome is more than enough healing for me for the game. At least for the uh, main story. Super bosses and the like, I'd like to have Salvation, since it also gets rid of status effects, but for the main game, Madeira Han is plenty. Now what I'm showing off here is the strategy I use to level grind and mantra grind. I'll deal a lot of damage with Surf, pass off Gale, and then use Consume, which is a much better version of... Uh, just devour, since it deals a lot more damage. And then, with the skills Argilla has set up, it gives more uh, AP and otherwise to the rest of the party members. So, in conjunction with Iron Stomach, as long as Argilla's doing all the eating, no stomach aches, plenty of Atma points for everybody. I like it, and I wish I discovered it the first time I'd played through this game. Now, I'm using a new... I stopped using Camtasia, so I'm using Sony Vegas now. I got it from a friend. Uh, and it got rid of all of the frame skipping issues I had. This recording itself is a little borked. Probably because I've tried messing around with it so much, but... There's a lot of frame skipping in this episode. But fortunately, it doesn't desync anything, which is much more than I could have asked for, for Cam from Camtasia. So yes, I'm still going to be working on trying to, obviously, circumvent all the frame skipping I can. But for right now, as long as it doesn't interrupt anything important, for right now it's just level grinding and going through the dungeon. As long as it's not interrupting a cutscene or anything, I'm more than happy with how it's going right now. And the reason I'm doing this in post-commentary is because, yes, I did have, obviously, some audio commentary for this. But with the frame skipping and all that, it was a real pain to try to sync it up right. And I ended up accidentally hitting the mute button on my mic, so it sort of made the next episode very silent. Now, these things are weak to force, so... I really just wanted... I don't even know what I was trying to do there. It's one of those things that sounds like a good idea at the time, and then it turns out to not be a good idea. You know. See, I like this mic a lot, but the only issue I have with it compared to my old mic is... My old mic had a mute button, too. But it was uh, concave, so it was a lot harder to accidentally press. This one, the button for adjusting the volume and everything is on top. And very easy to accidentally press. So especially like during Skype calls and whatnot, I have to actually like hold this thing in my hands to avoid muting myself. These things are pretty annoying. Especially since, you know, their only weakness is fire. Well, probably not their only weakness. I'm pretty sure I could slam it with a uh, Teradyne or something. But you know, I'm just trying to hold down auto to make things go quicker, and it's like, whoop, shield, shield. Oof. Poor guy.
And I can't really say poor guy for the brutes, they are trying to kill us. And you know... It's what they were born to do in this world. Past me! Oh wait, for a second I thought they were weak to, uh... I know something in here is t shields against Zahn. For a second I thought it was those Gurs, but... Or were those? I don't think those were Gurs. Whatever those things were, they are, um, immune to Terra. Which makes sense, considering they're flying. I think these things are also weak to electricity, because they are packing Electrin. And I don't know if I ever try to use it. For the most part, I think I just forget that I have the Zeo spells on Gale. Especially since the first time I played through this game, I used Zeo spells... ...once in a blue moon. The only dungeon where you're forced to use the yellow is the only time I ever bothered with it. But then again, that's kind of my issue in a lot of Megami Tensei games. Zeo and Bufu are generally my least used spells. Can't really think of a time where I ever really used the Zeo spells. Besides, like, Persona 4, where your first Persona is packing Zeo. And then Kanji having all the, you know, like, the Zeo dying and all that. Well, I was a fan of a Lek dance in Devil Survivor. And then as far as ice spells go, Digital Devil Saga is really the only time I enjoy using them, and even then, I'll prefer to go for Agudine if I can. Simply because it comes out a lot quicker. You know, quick explosion instead of just freezing them, cracking, then exploding. Yeah, this recording was just kind of messed up. But, you know, I don't hate it. Now, this dungeon itself, I am not a fan of. I can't honestly think of a good sewer level in any video game that I've ever played, and especially not in RPGs. I think the only sewer level I may have enjoyed was in Radiant Historia. Even though you know you had to go through that twice because of Radiant Historia's whole, uh, I don't want to say gimmick. And again, like every video game does, not every video game, but a lot of video games do have, you know, little gimmicks to try to separate them from the rest of the games. Like, I don't know if I can really pick out a good gimmick without sounding like an idiot. I guess you can kind of put motion control under that, unless the game is really built around it pretty well. Like, uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, I gotta say the motion controls were probably pretty gimmicky, because, you know, it was... You know, why should I be able... why should I just swing my Wiimote around if pressing a button's gonna do just as fine for how well the Wiimote's picking up my motions? Here, let me swing up with my Wiimote. And then Link's gonna swing horizontally. You know, that was better in Skyward Sword, but then you could kind of argue it's that's that's game's gimmick, but it's built from the ground up for it. So... I'm not even talking about the game, but, you know, it's really the same thing we've always done. Picking out mantras, not having enough money for the mantras. And another thing about this episode is... A lot of the things you're seeing in here, like levels and whatnot, may be different from... what you're gonna end up seeing later in the LP. 
because I ended up re-recording this to test something differently, and then I saved over the file. Now this part's annoying. Since you have to go through these water tunnels, and every time you do, one bit of solar noise is added. Once you've made eight movements, you're going to get flushed all the way back to the beginning. And you have to do it perfectly to, if you want to progress further. You can't just try to loop around like this and expect to make it on time. You will get to the final room you need to be in, but you'll have hit full solar noise and you'll go back. Learned that one the hard way. Not on this recording, but... Now, there is a treasure in here that you may want to get. If I'm not mistaken, you can get the blue key in here, and I haven't really grabbed any of the keys. My logic is that if I do end up going for the post-game stuff where the keys are necessary, I'm, I'm just going to do it off screen. Well, yeah, I'll do it off screen, or like, you know, get to it off screen. And you're going back. I do believe this was the point where I was looking up a guide to get through it. And it's actually pretty simple. Because it's like northwest, north west, north, 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 or something. Something along those lines. You know, it's that Legend of Zelda Lost Woods situation. Now, I never actually tried to test it out, but I think the solar noise is going to stay totally still if you just swim around wasting time. It would seem weird just, you know, swim in one room until you hit max solar noise and get flushed back down. Oh yeah, things are going poorly here. Now, you see, if I wasn't stupid, I would have just used this. Now, this isn't what I was thinking of. It is. See, the whole thing about, especially in this room, you don't want to mess around with the Asaurus too much. Because that thing will show up. Fiend Forneus. Forneus, sir. Something. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is the first boss in Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. But it knows Stone Gaze, so. You don't want to really mess around with things that have uh, death-type skills, even with the anti-death shield. Because after all, it has two press turn icons. That's more than enough for it to cast Mudo on on someone, and then cast Mudo on on them again. 
Plus, I don't think I was packing any disc stones. I was in a pickled peach in this situation. And I got greedy here because I knew, you know, when they're scared, the hunt type skills do more damage. I don't know if I've already said this, but if an enemy is frozen, unlike really any other situation, consume type skills are going to do a lot less damage. You know, I to steal the words from someone who did a walkthrough on this game. I guess demons don't like their food frozen. <laughs> I said if the demons let it go. It's always satisfying to max a mantra in one battle. I spent an ungodly amount of time in that battle. Okay, no, so it's northwest, north, north, north. And you can tell you're going the right way because you fly so far. See, I don't get why you'd climb a ladder underwater when it would just be easier to swim up. These Dekarabias are very resistant to magic. At least any kind of magic that I tried. I don't think I've ever tried whacking them with a Zeonga. But the only damage, you know, well, the only magic that I found did a decent amount of damage was Surf's Ice Amped Bufudine. And I'm taking the amount of large Carmen Terminals in this dungeon. Which is weird. That they have so many large karma terminals, considering every base that we've seen so far has had, like, one or two. And then just a random sewer section has had two so far, and there's a third later in. It's just weird that a sewer system gets so much love with bases don't. It's supposed to be, like, good for building the sewers. Because people can get hurt while building things. You wouldn't want that to happen. You can get sued. You know you don't want your people to die when you're trying to build your sewer. Because then your sewers aren't going to get built. And then where's your poop going to go? Well, you probably already noticed as, you know, Surf is a lot of sense, but Surf hit 99 magic. Just insane. And then again, we are close to the end of the game, honestly. This is the third to last dungeon. We got Zandine, Force Amp, and a bunch of useless skills I'm never going to use for Argilla. jump cuts in this. I'm not editing these in, by the way. But I'm glad it's just skipping a bunch of crap I don't want to 
really bother with. Now, I do want to eventually get Gale into the Mediorama mantra. Because it would be nice not to just totally rely on our Jilla for healing. If something goes wrong, ideally I want two healers. series, Decarabios are my least favorite demons. Because in every game I fight them in, they're annoying as hell, and they're creepy too. Especially with the rolled back, pulsing eye of it all, it's disgusting. And I'm glad they nailed me with that when I'm right next to a large karma terminal. to be able to just heal right away instead of just being in the middle of a dungeon. Everyone's cursed. You don't know what to do. You're not sure if you should save your discurses in case you get nailed later, like in the next fight or something. It ends up being no fun for anyone. I'd say the second large karma terminal is about when you're halfway through the dungeon. And I thought this was the end of the dungeon, so I was setting up uh, mantras just in case. Which in hindsight was kind of a stupid idea. I already have Teradyne, wow. Yeah, I already knew I had Teradyne. Why did I forget about Teradyne? This is also why I don't like post-commentary, because it, it's a lot of extra work. Now, when you see these things... run. There is nothing good about fighting Hurl's Beggars. Belgir, sir. You know, it's Norse. I don't even know how I can begin to pronounce it. Those things are... P anything that's large and by itself is usually packing two press turn icons to compensate. And then they have skills that are generally no fun. Especially those things with their power charge mind blast combo. I think it's mind blast. It's, it's something big and physical that hits everyone. If I'm not mistaken, I show it off here. I am mistaken, so I will not be showing it off here. But I do show it off. Even though show it off is probably the wrong word. More like be grateful that I make it. Anyway, when you see them just run, because unless you have Agudine... I don't know what they're weak to. It might be Zeo something. But I think they ref straight up reflect ice. They definitely don't take damage from ice. So nail them with a full charged Agudine. Not like mine charge or anything, just like a force amp Agudine. And then hope they don't get to drop on you. So 
I had some awful luck with the, uh... Back attacks. I can't really call them, like, the ambush. I had awful luck with getting ambushed. I want to call them back attacks because of... I'm playing a lot of Final Fantasy IV today. Because you know they have that, uh... PSN sale Square does on the... The sale in the PSN store, and I got the Final Fantasy IV Complete Collection on my Vita for only ten bucks. Which is fantastic. I gotta say, I really love the Vita, and I would recommend picking one up if you're an RPG fan who never owned a PSP. Because mostly I just use it as a PSP emulator, but... You know, the four games I own for it are nice. You know, Tsukaya... Disgaea 4 is going to come out in like four days. I'm hyped about that. Final Fantasy X collection on the go. They say it's the HD collection, but the Vita screen isn't quite HD yet. And I don't think it... Well, it can't be HD yet. It's not an HD screen. But it's about as close to it as you can get. Not really. But hell, it's Final Fantasy X on the go. It's not the love. And then Danganronpa, and the sequel's coming out soon, too. The only stinker I've got on my Vita so far is Demon Gaze, which... I'm sure is fun, but... I never got into it. But you know, I see four Decarabias, and you're like, no, screw that. No, there's nothing fun about Decarabias. Great chakra, nice. Which I don't know if I've already explained, but I think I have. But great chakra is, you know, give back full MP to the party. Which kind of puts them under the too good to use category. And I honestly can't think of a boss that you're going to want to use it on. Because nothing's really important enough to use it, except probably some of the optional bosses, because I didn't fight a single optional boss in this game, because I wanted to just go straight on to Digital Devil Saga 2. But I think by the time you're fighting the optional bosses, you've optimized yourself to the point where running out of MP on everyone simultaneously probably isn't a big concern. And if you're sticking this far out of the episode, what I want to ask now... Or maybe I should do it at the beginning of the next episode. I'm going to ask it now and the beginning of the next episode. Cover my bases. I think here I was confused about where I was and wondering if I was as close to the end as I thought I was. But I'm going to ask, do you want me to do the optional bosses? Do you just want the story and then move on? Or do you want me to do what I'm going to do with Strange Journey and show, like, everything off? Oh, here's where the Pearl's Beggar fell here. If you're not at full health, that thing's going to wipe you. Hell, even after, if you're at full health and you're not, like, floating in the 30s, it's still going to wipe you. There's nothing fun about those things. And we get a revival gem. Which is nice. I feel like in this game, more than any other one, maybe Nocturne, because I haven't played it. I mean, I've owned it for almost two years now, and I haven't really even opened it. I didn't get it wrapped or anything, it's just... Revival spells are useless in this game, because they shove revival gems down your throat. And then at the end, you can get the revival orb, which is just a revival gem with infinite uses, so why would you ever waste a space on Sama Rikarm? Especially in the end, we're just getting the 600,000 maka you need to get the orb is not that hard at all. Anyway, I'm going to end the episode here. See you guys next time.